In the name of the law, we bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case files. in 1935. The town of Prentice, Texas seemed gripped in the shadow of... Good morning. Just a couple of steps, Molly. Here's your chair, dear. Let me take your cane, Molly. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Perkins. Gosh, you, you might think I were an invalid the way you women go on. Never mind now. I'm just being selfish, that's all, looking after the best husband in the state of Texas. There. Comfortable? Uh... Yeah. Thanks, Rhea. Guess you didn't know what you were getting into when you married this husband. I didn't, though. I just snatched you away from all the other girls in town. Isn't that right, Mrs. Burton? It certainly is. Plenty of girls in this town would like to fetch Morley, child, as king, and look after him in this nice home. Uh, but I want to do more things for myself. Infantile paralysis is bad enough. Yeah, now we having... won't even mention it. You're doing lots of things for yourself. You're able to carry on with your work, dear. Yes, thanks to you. Oh, but, Rhea, I don't want you to wait on me so much. I want to wait on you, like other men would. Now, I... now, you walked up to the altar on a cane to marry me, I Rhea, need... I didn't marry you for better or for nurse. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got a good wife and a grand nurse, all in one. On my 35th birthday, three years ago. Best birthday present I ever got. And more beautiful... Now, than... darling, <laughs> here's your book. Now, forget about selling your cars and lending your money. You just relax and read while Mrs. Perkins shows me how to start this new sweater I'm going to knit for you. Goodness knows. I ought to do something to pay for that grand dinner. I certainly enjoyed it. And you helped with the dishes. The <laughs> perfect guest. Now, Mrs. Perkins, how many stitches shall I cast on the needle? Mm, well, now, let me see. Oh, uh, 60 ought to be about. What was that noise? What noise, dear? There. You hear it? Sounds like somebody knocking on the house outside. Oh, I know. It's that wisteria vine. It thumps against the house every now and then. It's knocking for me. What do you mean, dear? It's knocking for me to get it tied up before spring really comes. The wind must be coming up, Rhea. Before we start on these stitches, may I have a glass of water? Why, sir? Well, let me get it. Morley, you sit uh, right down now. Now, I'll get it. Now, Mr. Child, I wouldn't... Yes, think... I will. Oh, well, Rhea, come here. I came. Yeah, thanks. Just as I was saying a minute ago, I want to do more. Darling. Oh, Mr. Child, please. I want to wait on people once in a while. I don't want people waiting on me all the time. Just the steps of the kitchen. Oh, dear, I wish he wouldn't. Oh, it'll do him good. Get his mind off himself. Be careful, Morley, darling. Oh, hot or cold, Mrs. Perkins? Cold, please. Okay, one on the city to go. Think I can make a good soda clerk? That glass of water, Morley, speak to me. Let's hear on his neck. It's blood. Blood? Blood! Oh, I'll, I'll call the doctor. I'll get him right away. Morley, your eyes, darling, your eyes. What are they trying to tell me? What are they trying to tell me? How's Mrs. Childs bearing up, Doctor? Suffering from shock. She's in the next room, Sheriff, with Mrs. Perkins. Hmm. A real tragedy. Is this the way you found the body, Doctor? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Sprawled out just like that. Right in front of the kitchen sink. I thought at first it was a stroke, and then I saw the blood on his neck. And you knew it was murder. Uh, at first I thought it might be suicide. Morley's been despondent, poor fellow. Infantile paralysis, you know. I know. But a man can't commit suicide and then hide the gun, can he? That's what I realized. And then I saw the glass broken in the window over the sink there. And that bullet hole was with a screen. So I called you. Murder at the casement. 
My men are outside looking for footprints now. I've sent a deputy over to Jeff Masters for his bloodhound. Bloodhound? Yeah, yeah. That killer's track should still be fresh. Those bloodhounds of Jeff Masters work good on a night like this. Just enough dew on the ground. I'll send along my best shots, too. Now, I want to see Mrs. Child. I ask her some questions. Uh, will you stay here, please? Very well, Sheriff. I shouldn't have let him go for that water. There, now, Ray. You did it for his own good. <laughs> Mrs. Childs, as a friend of Marley's as well as Sheriff, I want to solve this. this... Murder, call it murder. I don't mind hearing it. I don't mind anything now. It's terrible, Sheriff. It's terrible. Uh, Mrs. Childs. <laughs> For Morley's sake, we'll need your help. Oh, poor cripple. Who could have killed him? That's what we want to know. Had you noticed anything unusual about the house lately? Any, any tramps? Any suspicious characters? No. Yes. There was a knocking outside the house. What, uh, what time? Just before... Just before Mr. Child was killed. Mm-hmm. It was with the wisteria vine that flew and knocks against the house, Sheriff. Yeah. Mm. I think it was murder knocking out there in the dark. Uh, Mrs. Child, who was here at the house today? Any visitors? Well, at noon, just after lunch, someone came to see Morley about a second-hand car. It it was Fred Mitchell. Fred Mitchell, huh? We'll check on him. Anybody else? This this evening, right after I brought Morley home from the office, Jake Warren came. What do you want? I wouldn't like to say. You've got to, Mrs. Child. Jake's a bad actor. Well, it was about money. Molly had loaned him some money, and and they had some words. Mm-hmm. And and I heard Jake Warren. <laughs> Mrs. Child, you've got to talk now. What, what, what did Jake say? He, he said he wouldn't pay that interest on the money he owed. He, he, he said he'd kill Molly <laughs> Merciful heaven, what is that awful sound? Bloodhounds, they've got a fresh trail. If they follow to Jake Warren's house, we've got the murder. Come on, come on, that big red. They've got the big red. They've got the scent. What about Jake Warren? I'll come in here to his cell. He's had a night in jail to think things over. Maybe he can remember something the morning after. What's the matter, Jake? Can't you sleep? No. Neither could you. Neither could you. Now, get that load off your mind. You told Morley Child you'd kill him. Why did you kill him? Yes, I told him that. But I didn't kill him. I didn't do it, I tell you. Well, stand still. You walk in that cell like a hyena. Morley Charles was my friend. Fine friend you are, threatening to kill a cripple. That's just my way, Sheriff. I buy money from Morley before. We had words often, but I always paid him. Interest and all. What's your hand shaking like that for? That's the way I feel, Sheriff. I'm sorry for him. Sorry my last words with him was mean. I know it was Shul. Shul looks bad for me. Jake, listen. You went back to Charles' house last night after your argument, didn't you? Well, I drove by there about 9 o'clock. What for? To shoot him? No. I wouldn't kill a cripple. Well, then, did you see anybody hanging around when you drove by? Did you see any cars parked near there? No. Well, well, down the street I did. Yes. Yes, I saw a car. Looks suspicious, too. Lights out. An old Chevrolet touring car. What color? What year? Green, I think. Yes. Yes, Green. The street light was shining on it. I could see a plane, all right. An old, an old jalopy, that's what it was. About 1928 model. Notice anything peculiar about it? Well, well, now that you mention it, yeah. Funny little thing. But I noticed when I drove by, there was just one clean spot on the windshield. What do you mean, one clean spot? Looked like the windshield wiper had broken. I could only make this little one a round spot clean. The street light shone through it plain. Green Chevy with a bum windshield wiper. Maybe that'll hang somebody yet, unless Jake hears the one. Well, Jim, we 
checked all the others. Let's try this gas station. Hey, Pop. Mm-hmm. You seen an old green Chevy around lately with a windshield wiper that just cleans a little circle on the windshield? About a 1928 model. Um, a 1928 model, you say, Sheriff? Yeah, Pop, uh... Don't suppose you saw one like it lately. Oh, we sell them all on supercharged, hop, skip, and go gas sooner or later, yes, sir, but I... Yeah, yeah, come to think about it, I... I do remember a jalopy like that one that you mentioned. What? You know who drives it? Remember the driver? Oh, gosh, Sheriff, see so many of them, I... I, I just run a gas station at a memory course. It's murder, Pop. Well, let me see. Let me think now. Uh, this here crate was... was run by a young fella. Yeah, and I... I think he comes from around Cedar Way. Hmm. Center. Yeah, center. That's center. right, center. He was driving 90 miles for something. That's all you know about him? Yeah. And center is a pretty big haystack to look for a needle in. Sure, everybody here in Santa knows that puddle jumper. It belongs to Terry Bramlett. Who's Terry Bramlett? What does he look like? Oh, Terry's a nice young chap. Swell kid, all right. He works at a gas station up the road here. Tall, brown hair, about 22. Good-looking lad. Where's this gas station he works at? I yeah, know. He's just down to the next traffic light, but uh, say it's noon hour. you probably find Terry in center. Pretty apt to see that car here's parked right along Main Street. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. I'll say it is. There's the car, Sheriff. In front of Henry's drugstore. All right. Park right alongside and wait for him. Yep. Yep, it's a car, all right. There's that little clean circle on the windshield. Do you think a broken windshield wiper is going to break this case? Can't tell. Look, I think that's our young man coming now. Yeah. Tall, brown hair, good looking. I got an idea, Jim. Take it easy. Hello, Terry. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Hello. Hello. So you know me, huh, Terry? Sure, everybody knows the Sheriff. Terry, I guess you know what I want to talk to you about. No, Sheriff. <laughs> Is my car getting too old for the road? What was it doing in Prentice last night? It wasn't in Prentice last night. It was right here. You didn't lend it to anybody to drive to Prentice? No, sir. I never lend that car. It's an old family heirloom. Terry, where were you last night? Last night? Let's see, uh... I worked at the gas station till five, knocked off, picked up some shoes at the shoemakers. Oh, they're on the corner. And then I stayed with a sick friend. Who? Fred Manning. His father died lately. Fred's been sick. Lives over on Linden Road. Terry, do you know Mrs. Morley Child? Why, no. That is, I know of her. I... She's uh, beautiful, isn't she, Terry? I, uh, I don't know. Ever know Morley Child? No, sir, never saw him. Terry, do you do you have a twenty two rifle? Why, no, sir. No, sir. Get in, Terry. You get in the back seat, Jim. All right, Sheriff. Terry? Go on over there. Yes. Terry, do you know Mrs. Childs here? No, sir. I never met her, Sheriff. Mrs. Childs, do you know this young man, Terry Bramlett? No, I never saw him before. You never telephoned him? No. There were 20 calls from this house in the past two weeks to the gas station where Terry works. How do you explain those calls, Mrs. Childs? Why, possibly Mr. Automobile failed. Terry, did Mr. Childs call the place where you work? I couldn't say. I'm outside most of the time. You're outside, eh? When you were outside, did you ever drive over to this house? No, sir. Then how did tire marks from your car get in the driveway? Uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody borrowed my car. But you said you never loaned your car. Well, I... 
Somebody might have. Why don't you talk to Jake Warren like this? He killed my husband. The way Jake's hand was shaken in jail this morning, he never could have hit a juggler vein with 22 through a screen window. Gee, that was terrible. Terry, why did you tell a cigar store man over in center that Mrs. Childs is as homely as a mud hen? Huh? I never did. I never saw Sheriff. I think she's beautiful. You do, eh? Yes. She's beautiful. She's the most beautiful woman I ever... Stop it. Stop it. Terry, I told you I was going to have you meet a beautiful woman, didn't I? Yes, sir. Is Mrs. Childs beautiful enough for you to kill a man? I didn't kill anybody. You love her, don't you? Don't you? She's looking at you. Go on, tell her. You love her, don't you? Yes, I love her. He doesn't know what he's saying. You love her, Terry. And you wanted her husband out of the way, didn't you? I didn't kill him. I wasn't near the place last night. I told you where I was. What about it, Jim? You tell him where he was. Uh, we checked up on your alibi, Terry. It worked all yesterday, all right. And you got your shoes at the shoemaker's at 5 o'clock. But you didn't spend the night with that sick friend. I did. You told Fred Manning to tell you did. When this murder began to creep right up on him, he got scared. Oh, no, no, he lied, Who's he lied. Torture? Why do you torture this boy? You tortured him, Mrs. Childs. You loved him so much, you murdered for him. You murdered your crippled husband. You put him in that coffin in the next room so you No, 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 Rhea. My darling, Rhea. He's crazy, Sheriff. He's mad. Rhea. I can't let him talk like that. Rhea, my darling. You fool, you fool. Let me oh, 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 oh. Hold her there. Hold her. Hold her, Terry. Now, Terry, sit down. Tell us about this. Tell us all about it. I'll tell the sheriff. Everything. The first night I met Rhea, Mrs. Childs, I, I don't know what brought me down here from Santa. It was last summer. It was Saturday night. Chocolate soda, all black. There you are. Thanks. Pretty good food down here in Fenton. Almost as good as we have up in center. Yeah, thanks. Fifteen cents. Right. <laughs> Pretty nice girls here, too, eh? The one that just went out in the white dress and the white hat for any looks you over, buddy. Oh, did she? <laughs> I saw in the mirror for a second. Boy, isn't she beautiful. Oh, you said it. That Mrs. Morley Child. Rhea Child, the town belle. Best-looking woman in this part of Texas. Gee, she's the most beautiful woman I ever saw. Ah, oh, not a chance, buddy. He's got a good husband with plenty of money. Molly Childs, he's a cripple. But he's one white man, I'm telling you. There goes that telephone booth again. Must be the wrong number. Hello? Yes? Oh? Sure, I'll call him. Hey, Hen. It's for you. What? For me? I don't know anyone in Pentis. Sure, she said... Uh, uh, she wanted to talk to the chap at the soda counter in the blue ca coat and the gray flannel slice. That's you, ain't it? A girl calling? Sure, go on, boy. This is one for the book. That's funny. I don't know anyone here. Uh, which phone is it? That third booth. Thanks. Hello? I just saw you in the drugstore. When I saw you, I knew I'd have to meet you. Do you know who I am? Yes, yeah. yeah, Sure. You're the most beautiful woman I ever saw. Oh, you dear boy. Can anyone hear you? No one but you. Darling, can you meet me tonight, right away? Yes, where? Up the street under those maple trees. I'll be waiting there. I'll be there. And listen, don't leave. Hey, buddy, aren't you going to finish your soda? Be careful. I almost had to marry a blind date once. <laughs> come to me. Sweetheart, isn't this funny? I don't know who you are, but I love you. Come here in the shadows. Hold me. Hold me. What did you think of me that first night you saw me in the drugstore? Oh, yeah, darling. I've told you a hundred times already. Say it again. When I looked into your eyes just that instant, I knew you were the woman I'd been looking for. You were a young Greek god to me. I never thought I'd have those lips of yours so close to mine. They're yours, Terry. Take them. No. No, 
of an upline. They're your husband. Don't talk like that. I can't help it. I belong to you, Terry, not to that cripple. He had infantile paralysis when I married him, and I knew it. Why did I do it? I don't know. I head along the street and watch him go by with you, limping with his cane. I can't stand it. I wish he were dead. Bria. I do. Let's wish him to die. Hold me again and let's wish it. He's drugged. He's a full of drugs he'll never wake up till morning. I feel queer here in the same house with him. It should be your house. It will be soon. Rhea. Yes, and you should have a new car, too. That old car Didn't of yours. did you like being out in the woods in it yesterday? Yes, but it's such an old thing. I've plenty of money, and I'll have more soon. Rhea, I don't want money. I want you. I long for you. I want you for always. What are you doing about it? Nothing. I could go right in there in the next room and kill him now for you. No. He's so drugged he'd never know what did it. Let me do it. No, Rhea, please. And why don't you kill him? Oh, then try it. Rhea, I will. I'll do it. I'll kill him. When? First chance I get. I'll get my rifle. Can you shoot well? Oh, it's a shooting gallery for two years. I can hit a dime with a twenty-two. Oh, Terry. Rhea. Rhea, we belong to each other. I can't live without you. Here's what we'll do. I'll invite Mrs. Perkins to dinner so there'll be no suspicion tomorrow night. You stand outside. Hit the side of the house with the wisteria vine. When I hear it, I'll know you're there. I'll get him out to the kitchen window. What did you do then, Terry? I got my rifle. I drove over last night. Parked my car down the street. Then I came, stood outside there in the dark. I looked in and I saw them sitting there. He was reading. They were knitting. I knocked with the hysteria vine and I waited by the kitchen window. Then I heard him. I don't want people waiting on me all the time. Just a step to the kitchen anyway. Be careful, Morley, darling. Out of call, Mrs. Perkins. Call, please. Okay, one on the city to go. Think I can take a trip to the other clerk? Morley! What's the matter? Duke, one of your reporters been drinking ice cream sodas. Since I've been on this Mrs. Child Terry Bramlett murder trial. It's even got me. Is the jury still out? Yeah. Ellie's going to call me here if they come in. He'll get the flash into the paper. Boy, some trial. Yeah, some murder. Oh, I'll get it. It's the third booth, Duke. Yeah, I'll get it. Maybe Larry. Hello? Larry? Yeah. Jury in? What? Already? Yeah. Did you flash the paper? Good. Well, what's the verdict? What? 25 years for Mrs. Child? What about Terry? 50 years for Terry Bramlett. Well, Larry, they got a long time to think it over. <laughs> again when truth and justice triumph in the name of the law. <laughs> 